This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice together and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Highlands. Those of you that are visiting with us, we always hope that you will find our church to be filled with God's love, grace, and warm hospitality. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers with us in worship today. Uh, we will certainly reflect and thank God for that in the context of our worship as we uh, offer a blessing for what we have traditionally called the blessing of the infants, but as you will see when they come in, they're a little beyond that stage. We'll share a little bit more about that. Uh, a little bit later, but it's a wonderful time to be in worship together. Uh, as we begin our worship, I want to invite you to take this as an opportunity to prepare your hearts and minds to experience God's love and grace.
once upon a time, Highlands United Methodist Church had very few children and no babies. And then one year, there was a bumper crop of babies. And Valerie Nash said, we must celebrate. And so we started blessing the infants of the church each year. It is not baptism, it is merely a blessing. And as one dad up here said, you can't get blessed too much. Because of the pandemic, we have not done this in a while. And so it's really not the blessing of the infants, it's the blessing of the toddlers. But we are glad to be doing this again. So brothers and sisters, beloved in Christ, the birth or adoption of a child is a joyous and solemn occasion in the life of a family. It is also an occasion for rejoicing in the church family. I bid you therefore to join the parents in giving thanks to God for the gift of these children and for their families. Lillian Arnold. Lillian, receive this blessing. God bless you and keep you. May you always walk as a child of the light, strengthened daily by God's love, mercy, and grace. Amen. Kate Arnold. Kate, receive this blessing. God bless you and keep you. God, always help you walk as a child of the light, strengthened daily by God's love, mercy, and grace. Amen. James Darby. Yesterday, James celebrated his birthday. James, God bless you and keep you. God strengthen you, and as you walk as a child of the light each day, do so surrounded by God's love, mercy, and grace. Amen. And Wesley Hudson. Hey, Wesley. Wesley, God bless you and keep you. May you always walk as a child of the light, strengthened daily by God's love, mercy, and grace. Amen. And will you join me with the words printed in your bulletin? Gracious God, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, we come before you with gratitude for the gift of these children, for the joy that has come into their families, and the grace that surrounds them and all of us. Help us joyfully to nurture them within your church, by the power of your Holy Spirit, fill their homes with love, trust, and understanding. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
A lesson from the Revelation to John. I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of a, the great ordeal. They have been washed, their robes have been washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. May these words reveal Christ to us. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Was the festival of the dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. But my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. 
Grant, O oh Lord, that in this moment of proclamation, the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are very strength and our salvation. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Such memorable words by the psalmist echo throughout Scripture and time. They describe God as caring and loving, leading and providing for God's people. When all is said and done, as the book of Revelation depicts, what we want most, what we need most, is a God who cares, a God who understands us, a God who loves us, a God who will go to hell and back for us, to lead us toward a hopeful future. The providence of God is not about a forceful deity controlling our destiny, but a shepherd leader guiding us proveniently toward a better tomorrow. When we discover God in this way, we discover belonging. We discover a home, a place, a community that unites us with the diversity of humanity rather than pitting us against one another. The shepherd is the biblical model of leadership that Jesus sought to live by and embody. Time and time again, whether it was his own disciples, the religious leaders, or the multitudes, the people were looking for a warrior king. Jesus refused to take such a throne. He refused to be a Messiah that saved people through the means of might and force. Jesus was a different kind of leader different kind of Messiah. Now we need not be too critical of those who sought a warrior in Jesus. We Christians continue to do that to this very day. It seems like we have Jesus fighting all sorts of battles these days. On a basic level, fighting back to defend the innocent is a noble thing. I teach my children, for example, to stand up to bullies and to defend the innocent. On a much larger scale, we honor and memorialize those who valiantly serve to protect our freedom and the freedom of others. Where would our country be or even our world without them? The book of Revelation certainly recognizes the inevitability of strife and warfare on both the historic and cosmic scale. Yet it also recognizes Jesus as the Lamb of God, the very center of God's reign, the one who took all that strife, all that warfare, all that oppression and injustice upon himself, and in so doing defeated its power, defeated its hold over us. As Christians, as followers of the Good Shepherd, we must never forget that. We must never forget what the cross represents. But we also know that that is not the end of the story. We must also always look forward toward resurrection, toward a true and lasting peace. When the mechanisms of strife and warfare on a multitude of levels becomes more of what we want rather than the Lord as our shepherd, we are no more a part of Jesus' flock than those who were questioning him in the portico of Solomon. We follow a different kind of Messiah. 
we follow a good shepherd. And his voice can be heard all around us if we dare to listen. The 10th chapter of John, the gospel writer shares a very important contextual clue. He writes, at, the time of, at, at that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. The festival of the dedication is part of what the Jewish tradition celebrates today as Hanukkah. This festival takes place during the month, as we know, of December. It dates back to just after the Maccabean Revolt, around 164 BCE. And you can read more about that history in the Deuterocanonical, what we Protestants call the apocryphal books of Maccabees. In summary, it was during the time of the Syrian Empire. At one point, the Syrians occupied the holy city of Jerusalem. During that occupation, the Jewish people lived under the harshest of conditions. And the greatest insult of all, they were forced to make burnt offerings on the temple altar to Syrian gods. Through an uprising and revolt, Judas Maccabeus defeated the Syrian forces, demolished the profaned altar, and rededicated a new altar to God. Fast forward back to Jesus' little question and answer as he stood in the portico of Solomon. When Jesus was questioned, he was walking in the temple known as the portico of Solomon. This was probably one of the oldest parts of the temple, dating back to the original construction under King Solomon. In this brief period of questioning, Past, present, and future were all on display in this little story in John. Now remember what I said we call that. A Kairos moment. God's time. John's gospel is full of such moments, such Kairos moments. They were basically asking him, we want to know. Are you going to take us back to our glory days? Are you the Messiah? Are you the one who will save us? Lead us to defeat our enemies, the Romans, and restore the honor of God, which the temple represented. It's interesting when you think about it. Paul depicts Jesus as the new Adam. Yet one of Jesus' titles, according to the Gospels, is Son of David. Isn't that what the people said or called him when he entered Jerusalem on the back of a donkey? We celebrated that on Palm Sunday. They said, Hosanna to the Son of David. In other words, save us. And be our king. About a millennium before the time of Jesus, David was a young shepherd boy that eventually became the greatest king in Israelite history. I like to think of Jesus as the new David. Not as a king forcibly ruling from a throne, but rather as David was before. A shepherd caring for his flock. True, many of the biblical writers describe Jesus as a king, but in Jesus' own words, he says, I am the good shepherd. He is a different kind of leader. I think it's fair to say we, we need, we want 
We are looking for different kinds of leaders in our society, in our world today. Particularly those who, like good shepherds were in ancient times, are so often passed over. We need new leadership, this kind of leadership. But you know, if you've ever thought about this, but if Jesus were walking the earth today, I sometimes wonder if we would recognize him. And I certainly wonder if we would promote or elect him to much of anything in our society. In fact, I think we'd bypass him in a heartbeat. Why do you think there's such an effort within Christianity to remake Jesus into a warrior for our cause than a savior for all people? In doing so, we're not following the Good Shepherd. We're not listening to his voice or even a part of his flock. We need to be looking for, listening for a different kind of leader. I remember one Mother's Day, I was serving my very first church. Great little community of people. They, they taught me so much, probably more than I ever taught them. It was during Sunday school, right before church, and the lay leader was teaching. Very nice gentleman. He, just very set in his ways. He was teaching on the topic of spiritual leadership and alluded back to Paul and his writings on the man being the spiritual head of the household. He went on and on about this. As he did, I looked around the sanctuary and noticed that the women outnumbered the men three to one. Well, I couldn't stand it any longer. I just, I just had to interrupt it. I said, I disagree with you. I'm looking at a lot of spiritual leaders in this sanctuary, and they are men and women. In fact, there are more women than men by my count. I know this doesn't apply to everyone, but if it were not for my mother, I would have never made it to church. I would have never heard about the love of Jesus. I would have never been taught the golden rule to love God and neighbor or to care for the least of these. She's the one who fed me changed my diapers, cleaned up after me, bandaged my cuts and scrapes, and took care of me when I was sick. She provided for my every need and want as a child. I fussed, cried, and argued for sure. Still do. But when I wanted to go home, I knew exactly where to go, to be with my mother. I simply looked at him and said, if that's not Christ-like, then I don't know what is. That is being a spiritual leader, albeit a different kind of leader. We want, we need a different kind of leader. But we have that in Jesus. We have a good shepherd that bids us to hear his voice all around us. And those that care, that love, that lead us out of danger, that will go to hell and back to save us, to protect us, 
to heal us. Listen for his voice and those voices. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Amen. Let us stand and unite our voices in our affirmation of faith, which can be found in your order of worship. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God of Eve and Miriam, Sarah and Hagar, Martha and the Marys, you have called women to undertake the sacred responsibility to carry life and to bring new life forth into the world. For many women, this is idealistic and joyful, but for too many, it is a painful burden. There are too many women in our world who are victims of violence, war, and the bonds of poverty. And like so much of life, motherhood is complex, and we find it often too easy to reduce these complexities and to overly simplify. We have platitudes, and we limit our understanding to our own experiences. But as a part of your family, O oh God, we support all women, all mothers, and all families in all situations. Loving God like you, we desire that all families not merely survive, but thrive and enjoy life abundantly. This week, complex issues have once again divided us and backed us into far corners, both political and otherwise. Once again, we find ourselves threatened fearful and reactionary. Too often we cannot trust each other and routinely vilify others. O oh God of Eve and Miriam, Hagar and Sarah, Martha and the Marys, save us, we pray, from despair. Draw near to us. Draw near to all mothers, particularly the women and children of Ukraine. Empower us. Give us courage and wisdom to practice our faith. Rekindle our hope. Keep us mindful of our vows at baptism to renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, to reject evil powers of this world, and to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Help us today, O oh God, and every day to seek justice, love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. Help us to find our voice. Help us to use our voice, always to speak truth to power. Give us courage, and may we heed the call of Jesus to even love our enemies. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear these prayers. And now let us unite our voices and our hearts, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning and welcome to the service of worship at Highlands. We are so glad that you're here today. You'll notice in front of you in the pew racks there are cards that you can share concerns uh, for prayer with members of our staff and our clergy. You can also, uh, if uh, you are visiting with us and would like more information about the life of our congregation, you can give us your name and email address or phone number and we'll be glad to share more information with you. As we try to become more uh, normalized as the pandemic has eased up a bit, the United Methodist Women will be meeting for the first time in a long time on May 9th at 11 a.m. at the home of Patty Perry Finney. We know they're looking forward to that. On May 22nd, we will gather and worship here for our Senior Recognition Sunday and recognize those of our youth group who will be graduating. There will be a luncheon following that downstairs. It is by reservation and there's uh, information up on that in your uh, happening at Highlands. And just because there's not enough to do that day, we're gonna have a church council meeting after lunch. So uh, it will be a full day, but a great chance for us to be together. And as I said, come back in a more normal way uh, as the church. One of the things we've tried to, we've decided to do this summer is have a series of cookouts each month and the dates are for those are on uh, the insert happening at Highlands. We encourage you to go ahead and save those dates uh, because that will be a great way for us to uh, reunite and come back together with some good food and fellowship. And finally, our Vacation Bible School and Summer Youth Mission Trips registrations are open and details about that can be found in Happening at Highlands as well. Let us continue our worship now with the presentation of our tithes and our offering.
realize this is the real benediction right here. These beautiful children and the love that they show and the song that is in their hearts. Go forth blessed by them to love and care for God's world. May the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit always be with you. Amen.